Oh, is that not meant to happen? Am I bothered? Yeah. I'm not even bothered I mean, me, if, you, if you're rocking that tash and that hairdo, you're you've, not got, you've got to have swag, haven't you? Welcome back to the Rich Shields Golf Show podcast, everybody. I'm your host. It's episode 126. And today, we've got special co-host, Mr. Matt Fryer. Matt, thanks for coming on the podcast, pal. Absolute pleasure. I feel like I've got very big shoes to fill with Guy not being here. I mean, sat behind his trophy here. I feel him over my shoulder. Well, he's not over your shoulder today because he's actually on holiday. So he won't be barging in and kicking you out of your yeah, chair. Like an ant and deck moment. Hey! <laughs> yeah, we've... We framed you. This is actually not real. Uh, but thanks for joining us. Uh, I couldn't think of anyone better to speak about the Masters and what's going on. What, what's what gone on in the world? Who would have thought, imagine starting this year, and somebody had said to you, they've got a crystal ball, yeah. and they say to you, right, Rick, the world number one is going to win the Masters this year. And you think, okay, yeah, okay. I, can, I, can, I can go with that. Yeah. Someone like John Rahm. Maybe Colin Morikawa has sneaked into world number one. Just okay? Thomas. So you're then thinking, okay, well, that, that's feasible. I can live with that. Then they say, okay, the guy that's winning the Masters has already won three times so far this year. You think, wow, this guy, somebody's on a heater. Is Tiger back? Has Rory hit some form? Is Tiger back? Imagine if someone said that to you, yeah, by the way. Yeah, the Tiger's I'm, playing I'm, in... I'm done. That you're going to see on Sunday of the Masters, Tiger in red. Amazing. Yeah. Then they say, okay, all that being said, the guy who wins the Masters this year, four-putted the last <laughs> hole and still won by three. <laughs> What kind of madness is this? What world are we living in? <laughs> Unbelievable. Scotty Scheffler, you have become a legend in four months. Yeah. I like how he asked his caddy as well um, before the final put. How many have we got to win this, by the way? How mad is like, that? Imagine being in that position, stood on 18. Uh, just a quick one. Can I can I have another three goes or, or not? The crowd's reaction was yeah. brilliant on that last foot. Yeah. like... Uh, all right, come on, wrap it up now. Yeah, they started cheering, and then all the patrons were like, oh, no, no, remember, this is Augusta. We don't do that here. Calm down. So joking aside, I, Scotty Scheffler is coming to this tournament as world number one, as not the favourite still, which is crazy to think. Mad. Um, he has absolutely dominated. He's barely put a foot wrong. No. He's navigated the Augusta National in emphatic style. Um, when he needed to par home, he decided to go on a birdie run. Yeah. When Rory McIlroy, which we will definitely come on to, shoots a final round of 64 and still yeah, loses but, out by three. Yeah. Rory who? <laughs> oh, no, come on. It was just phenomenal. So um, it, just, it just seems so crazy. Why is he so good, Matt? What is it that makes him so good? Because I can't quite put my finger on it. For me, watching him all week, I think that the biggest thing that he did, holding putts, like not, not lipping him in as well, they were like dead centre, 10 foot on him. When it needed to go in, it was like, yeah, what are you on about? Pressure? No, I'll just roll that in. It's only six foot on those greens at like 14. And also, he's chipping around the green. Short was game's ridiculous. Just isn't it? phenomenal. Because he hit, he hit a few dodgy shots. Like, I think he got away with a little bit. But like, you look at that shot on 12. Like almost duck hooks a nine iron, yeah, well left of the green, but then just no, no, no issue. That didn't happen. Stone dead taps it in. He's not got the most aesthetically pleasing golf swings, has he? No, no. I actually posted that like like on um, YouTube last night, saying you don't have to have this perfect golf swing to to go and win. It doesn't look the best, but he just knows how to get his golf ball round the golf course. Yeah, he just, just seems... controls it, and I suppose to some degree. For him, was Tiger taking all the headlines pre-tournament? Probably a bit of a blessing for him. Yeah, I think he comes He comes into the Masters. He's been, like you say, the, the crystal ball scenario there. Amazing. Wins these three tournaments coming in. Wins the match play. And he is like, he is the man. But no one was really going, Scotty Schaffer's going to win. He's going to win. It was all Tiger, Tiger, Tiger. And he's... Even even when he's won all these PGA Tour events in this short space of time at the start of the year, he's not really been that hyped. If it was Rory that would have gone and done that, like the world would have imploded. Yeah, the golf world, it wouldn't be here. But, oh my God, he's back! He's going to win more than uh, more majors than Jack Nicklaus. But it was like, 
Oh, he's, he's won a few Scott Sheffley yeah, here. He'll, he'll, he'll be all right. You know what? He's just gone very underneath the radar. Yeah. And by the way, he's the oldest 25 year old I've ever seen. He's 42, isn't he? <laughs> 25. I know, it's mad. <laughs> so I feel like he's going to have an unbelievable uh, kind of future as well, career. He's in some mad stats. So Scotty Scheffler, eight weeks ago, had zero wins on PJ Tour yeah. from 70 starts, okay? He'd not gone bad in his life. He'd won 8.7 million career earnings. Yeah. So he's not, he's not... We don't need to have a whip around. He's not short of change, and he was ranked number 14 in the world. And as of today, four wins from 76 starts... His now career earnings is seventeen point six million, Ooh. and that's just on course. Yeah, never mind what's going to happen off course for him now. Oh yeah, he's ranked number one in the world as we know, and he's now the Masters champion two thousand and twenty three. Do you think he has a long career? Um, looking at his swing and looking at like he looks only, like he saves it a bit. The only thing he re- he reminds me of a little bit, Jordan Spieth. Yeah. He, he kind of reminds me when Jordan was on a heater all those yeah. years ago, like he looked unstoppable, didn't yeah. he? Hits it a little bit everywhere, or but, gets but up and down, up from, and down everywhere. from everywhere. He really does remind me of, of Spieth because, again, Spieth maybe doesn't have the most aesthetically pleasing golf swing, but he just knew how to get the golf ball around. And when yeah. he when he was dominating, it's almost quite a similar story to some degrees. I, I, Same I think Jordan jo- was he yeah. from Texas. Jordan was a little bit younger than Scotty is right now. Yeah. And it probably just that moment when he. Was it 2018? Mm. Uh, no, it wasn't. You it was when Willett won. 2016. Yeah. 15. Sorry, 15 it was. Yeah. When he dunked it in the water on 12. Yeah. Jordan Spieth, after having like five shot head start coming into the back nine. That was the his kind of slow demise over, yeah. the, over the next four or five years. Yeah. And his confidence really dipped. And, and even this weekend, he missed the cut. He yipped mm. a few putts. Like, it doesn't look like Jordan from, from what we used to see. Yeah. I'm not saying that's going to happen with Scotty, but I could almost see it a little bit potentially. You don't but see he, like it. Listen, he could absolutely prove me wrong because oh, yeah. he has proved everybody wrong in the last four months. I think with like the like the marketing machine behind the PGA Tour as well, you look at like Jordan Spieth, they say very similar thing. Jordan was like going to be the next Tiger, wasn't he? When he came about, it was like, whoa, this is it. And then obviously went on his mad major run, won loads as well, as we alluded to a little bit earlier. With um with Sheffler, it's like oh he's one yeah. yeah you know what's also mad he so he had a caddy on the, he has a new caddy by the way this year yeah Ted Scott yeah who is a, a super famous caddy who actually retired yeah and he's come out of retirement to caddy for Scotty imagine that and this is what he's got yeah. out of it I'll come back I'll 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 tell you what I'll do you a favour I'll win the Masters if you come back for me how's about that um did did you Question for you. Did you enjoy the Masters this year? Um, yes. Yeah. Um, I, I, I backed, I backed Cam Smith in January before he won the Sony. Nice. Um, and before he won uh, the players. And before he won the players, yeah. So I was like happy about that, obviously. But watching it, I thought, oh, you know, watching it from, I think from like a Sky standpoint, some of the new camera angles that they had, on the on the um, did you like that? Oh, amazing! Yeah. I thought it really added to the viewing experience, and I, you know, like obviously Tiger new, was back. I like the new camera angles. I wasn't always dead sure on that on that really depth of field. Oh yeah, that was camera. a bit weird, didn't it? I like the different angles because I felt like it, yeah, like the drone angles and the, like the camera they had on ten overlooking the bunker, so you could actually get a little bit more of a an idea of the undulation. I think sometimes yeah. in the past it was always the old comment of. Oh, well, the TV doesn't do any justice for the slopes. But then, like, when you saw that angle of, like, Rory, I think one shot stood out for me, and it was like, whoa, that's, like, deep, that bunker. The only one new angle I didn't like was the one on the back of nine. You know, the yeah. par four? Mm. I always liked it side on. Yeah. Because it's got, like, three tiers, and yeah. you can really tell the three yeah, different you tiers. you couldn't see the undulation. Well, this one. was kind of at the back of the green, and, and it felt like it didn't seem as hard, mm. even though it was obviously ridiculously hard. Yeah. Um. Yeah, that, I felt like a lot of the new camera angles and a lot of the, the when the cameramen were actually carrying the camera and dropping it down. So I went, I went in 2018, and it's, it, I must admit, it is very cliche. People say, oh, "What's Augusta like?" It is hilly. bloody hilly. Yeah. Like, it's ridiculously <laughs> hilly. So some of those camera angles definitely showed that off better. Yeah. And then what about the golf? Um, 
a little bit of a, a non-start at the back nine yesterday, wasn't it? I think going into it, there was a lot of good stories again. You have Tiger coming back, obviously amazing, massive story. Scotty Scheffler coming in under the radar, no one really talking about him. Is Rory going to win a major? Obviously not going to win it. Um, he was close. Was he? Yeah, uh, so yeah. <laughs> yeah, so I think... I, I don't and, think and I'm, the golf. I'm, I'm, I'm remembering his round yesterday. Yeah. And you, if you see Rory yesterday, yeah. you think, how can he ever lose? Yeah. Ever. Yeah. But that's not what we see all the time. No, it's four-round tournament. <laughs> um, I yeah. Think, yeah, I enjoyed it. I, I, I did. I think it was a little bit lacklustre yesterday. But, but I, I see a lot of takes on that on Twitter and stuff, people saying, oh, it's a bit boring, but... It, it it can happen that way sometimes. It's not it's not anybody's fault. No, like some for me the the one major that I remember seeing and thinking, oh my god, this almost can't get any better for storyline was when Stenson was playing McElroy. Uh, Stenson Mickelson. was playing Mickelson in the Open. Was That's, it Neofield? Yeah. yeah. That time you couldn't you couldn't get any better. No, was it no. Muirfield or True? Yeah, it was Muirfield. 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 So that time you couldn't have met, that storyline. No, that was perfect. Was epic. Two that, gladiators of the game going head to head, and they were so far ahead of everyone else. But it was because they were going. Yeah, like, that's what we needed yesterday a little bit more of. And, and as Cam came out, and it was like, oh, birdie two, and it was like, uh, sorry, birdied one. It was like, great, here we go. Then we're he gonna, two. Yeah, we're going to have a sword fight here now. Yeah. This is going to be a real battle. And then three happened, and it was a bit like, oh, three was mad, wasn't it? Wind out the that was going like 10, 15 feet by. Oh my god! The, you... the shot from Cam <laughs> pitching in, obviously. Yeah, I think like the dr- Scottish Sheffler sh- uh, pitching it in the hole. No, so. Obviously, they both hit it left, haven't they? Yeah. Scheffler gets the drop from yeah. the... The grandstand. Yeah, the immovable object, which is permanent there, which is always there. <laughs> gets a nice little drop, like, in play. Um, then they both pitch short, didn't they? Cam's yeah. pitch was, like, what, 78 yards, was it? Yeah. Up on top, and he's watched Scheffler. It should have been like, right, just nut this up on. You know, it's easy to say that Saturday now, isn't it? But, yeah, um, and then, obviously, he goes and chips in, but... How, yeah, how do they how do they cope with the pressure, Matt? I don't know. I remember I, playing a yellow <laughs> stable for at Warrington, and uh, I had a putt for. <laughs> it's, like, uh, how does he? How does Tiger do it? Like repetition. But he's there. But he's been out of competition for seventeen months or so. Yeah, he stands on that first tee. I've never on Thursday. I've never seen crowds like it. Uh, like the anticipation. Like I'd finished. I'd, I was playing golf in Scotland, and I'd, and we purposely teed off so we get in time for Tiger's tee shot. Yeah, like I was at I was at Dunbarney Links in Scotland. Every TV had Tiger on. Everybody in the clubhouse just kind of stopped Stuck what like they were a zombie. doing and just watched. And that would have happened everywhere. I was at the races around the had world it on my phone. Yeah, uh, yeah, don't matter. <laughs> got to watch this everywhere and around the world. Was wanting to watch that first tee shot. I don't think I would have even got. Never mind hitting the ball. I don't think I could have pegged the ball oh, up. No, would have been, <laughs> excuse me, just uh, pop that on the peg, will you? Yeah, <laughs> someone would have done. Obviously, yeah, please. Um, but yeah, it, it was great to see him back, and not Tiger. And obviously, he shoots one under the first round. Yeah, and you think, oh my god, it's, it's happening! Shh, don't tell anyone. Like he he, he showed glimpses of excellence, didn't he? For, for me, the best shot of the tournament that uh, I only hit on Friday on the tenth. On the tenth, my god. He's just like hit that horrible one on nine where he's walked after it, dropped the club, yeah, dog shot, and then stands up there, same lie sort of thing, hanging lie below his feet, four iron, I think it was, yeah, to a bat right pin, bat right pin over the trap, and just hits a tiny little fade. Thank you, yeah. It, oh. I'm incredibly excited. I, when he said he was playing, part of me, and we spoke out on the podcast last week, part of me was like. Oh my god! Like it's Tiger Woods. He's back. He's playing. Like we we were like, does he even make the cut? Of course he made the bloody cut. Yeah. How do we even doubt him? Yeah. And then to see the glimpses of excellence back, yeah, really, really got me excited. I don't think he's done. I don't think he's done winning. I almost not guaranteed because like, no, there's no guarantees <laughs> in life but I would not back against him winning more major tournaments I think yeah St Andrews is you know a lot better for him I think the whole argument of it's very flat around St Andrews is okay but around the greens 
is seriously undulating, it, isn't it? It's a f- it plays more into his favour. It's a flat piece of land, yeah. but there's lots of little undulations. Yeah. That's mm. the tricky bit. So it might, as much as somewhere like Augusta, it's slopey. Yeah. They're almost like continuous slopes. Yeah. Where I feel yeah. like St Andrews oh, yeah. is a flat piece of land, but it but it's like yeah. it's it's Twists like and it, turns it's up got everywhere. little yeah, yeah little edges and um but if you didn't see yesterday it was on the Sky Sport it was on the Sky Sports coverage. Cara Banks got a great take from him. Mm. Tiger Woods has confirmed he is playing in the Open at St Andrews, the one hundred and fiftieth Open. <laughs> Makes it even better, doesn't it? Oh my god! <laughs> it's just like ridiculous because I re- I remember back in 2018 when he kind of there was question marks about him coming back and yeah. and this that and the other and would he would he come to Canoosti and he did and like the crowds like doubled tripled. We were overnight. mad, weren't we? Were, well, we were there, weren't we? Yeah, it Watching was him absolutely mental. The Open this year, it being at St Andrews, it's a different year because I think the tickets have already sold out. Like oh, yeah. the, the it's it's going to be special, and now it's just on like and then you your sprink- best Christmas ever. Then you sprinkle a little bit, bit of Tiger magic into that. Oh my God, it's going to be electric. I would honestly recommend, and maybe maybe shouldn't say this for health and safety reasons. Even if Get you've not there. got tickets, I, I would just be in St Andrews. Yeah. I just yeah, think just the to feel the buzz. Just to feel the buzz is going to be electrifying I Ima- really imagine do. like that first tee round the old course oh around the RNA building the, the reception he got at Augusta was huge yeah. the reception he'll get here in the UK at St Andrews the home of golf and he said it's his favourite course yeah that's mad that isn't it yeah him saying that's his favourite golf course yeah from all the places you would play it's not like like considering where they play it's very special. It's special, but you could play one, two, seventeen, eighteen, and be done with. It's then you super, could get in the jigger quicker. Yeah, it's super, super special. It's like it's like nowhere else in the world. I feel like I've been there a hundred times this year. I feel like I'm a, almost yeah. a resident. I, I've I've been foreigners thinking on the way here. Oh, Rick will bring St Andrews up actually. Uh, yeah, he's been there like a hell of a lot. And I've I feel been like there. I've been there a every weird quarter. amount, a weird <laughs> amount in this in this last year, and hopefully a lot more for the rest of the year. Um, because I, I really, I, I got home at the weekend and I, I really want to take the family. I think it's a even amazing, I want to go, this is, yeah. my, this is my plan, I want to go on a Saturday. I'm going up the Saturday before the Open. I'm thinking even just as a holiday. Yeah. Forget the Open for a minute. I'm going to pack the <laughs> oh, car right, right. with the kids and we're going to drive up on Saturday. I'm going to drive up all the way to St Andrews, like three and a half hours from where we live. Unpack, get in a hotel, get somewhere nice, go down to the beach, go and like see a bit of golf, show the kids like the golf museum, things like this, this that and the other. Sunday, the golf course is closed, yeah. which I still find amazing. Go and kick a footy on it. You can literally go and have a picnic yeah. on the 18th for the green if you want. Yeah, do it, why not? 18th green. Fairway, maybe. Fairway. They used to, the students used to wash the clothes in the burn, didn't they? Oh, my God. Imagine that. It's just the best. Yeah. It's just the best. It is like like the, it. the whole town itself, we did it not last time, we went the time before in September last year, but took a day to actually go and... Just go around St Andrews, go and look at like the old castle ruins up on the uh, yeah, like to the right of the first tee as you walk out. Go like back a few streets, go and see the universities, and what a place it is! Just, I think I'm going to move there. I, I would love to live there. Yeah. I really would. Um, a few big moments happened still yesterday. Yeah, you mentioned him before, Cam Smith. Now, yeah. a lot of the time, he looks like the smoothest character in the whole of the world. Like he doesn't look like anything phases him. I mean, like well, you saw him at the players when he when he actually chipped it into the water on the seventh second hole and got up and down like yeah. whatever. Not yeah. even not, not bothered. Oh, is that not meant to happen? Am I bothered? Yeah, I'm not even bothered. I me, mean, mate. If, you, if you're rocking that tash and that hairdo, you're not you've bothered. Got, you've got to have swag, haven't you? Um, what do you think about his shot on twelve? He just birdied eleven. Incredible birdie on the eleventh. Um, I don't. Is that my phone or your phone that's getting a bit static? Uh, Might move the phones away. Can you hear that, Matt? No. Bit static now. Um, the tw- 11th hole he just birdies. 12th hole, it's happened to so many golfers. Spieth. Yeah. Finau. Yeah. Molinari. Kepka. Cam Smith. Kepka? Yeah. Oh, no, Kepka put it in the bunker, didn't he? Cam Smith. Mm. Like, there's a few big names who have got that 12th in contention yeah. and dunked it short right in the water. Do you know what? Fair play to him. Stood there, thinks he's going to win. Or needs to do something to force Scotty, you know. He, do you think he, he did though? He was only was he only one or two shots back at that point? 
two. It was getting close. Was it two? He was getting very, very close. In fact, I've got scores in front of me, you're right. Yeah. So he was, after 11, Scheffler was 10 under. Yeah. And Smith was seven. So yeah, three shots back. Yeah. With a lot of holes left to go. Yeah, there's a lot of golf to be played, but I think, you, you know, and I like that he's got, gone there and done that. Did he go for it? Well, he was aiming there, wasn't he? He was aiming who, there. Who was it? Um, I listened to a podcast the other day. It might have been with Faldo or someone went on your one, but uh, or it might not have been. But they've in, they, they intended to hit it over the middle of the trap um, on 12. And as he's, he's, you know, shuffled a little bit and shuffled, all of a sudden he's aiming at that right yes. pin, not knowing you, your subconscious has gone. I'm aiming over that way to the safety. The flag's over there. Hello. And then all like of a, a sudden, magnet. yeah, exactly. And then you just hit, hit one poor swing, a little bit of timing, and it's in the grand scheme of things, it's like three or four yards short, isn't oh, it's it? It's nothing. But the the actual repercussions of being three or four yards short there is astronomical. A double, a triple. Yeah. It's so easily made. I think. Uh, I think fair play. You know, he's gone and done it. Put his, you know, he nailed his um, flag to the post or whatever the saying is. Yeah, something like flag to the mast, is it? Tail yeah. to the donkey, uh, or whatever it is. Uh, and he's got, I'm going to go and try and win it. Didn't come off, and yeah. mm, I'm not sure. Yeah, I'm not sure. I'm not sure he went for it. I think, I think he either he just, just a bad, it. bad golf shot, yeah. just a bad golf shot under pressure. Mm. Um, and, and what I was more shocked about was his reaction after. Like again, he's so normally ridiculously level headed. You don't know if he's. He's 20 under or 20 over. You've got no idea with Cam Smith. Yeah. But in those next three or four holes after, he really showed his emotion. Like, his yeah. emotions must have been boiling over yeah. to the point of, like, tipping. Yeah. Like, imagine you in that situation. You'd have had no clubs left. Wouldn't have been an Augusta. You'd have been bright green. Yeah. You'd have been as green as the grass at Augusta <laughs> as you turned into the Hulk and ripped your shirt off and snapped every club in your bag. I'm a reform character. Mm. I just don't play golf anymore. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, it's, it, it's it's a shame. I, obviously, he's had an unbelievable year. Um, but like I say, it's... it's I it, think I, I actually bet him last night for the Open already. Oh, really? Yeah. I think he's come back. Yeah. He's, he's such a baller. He just rips it, like you say. His putting's so good. His putting's it? great. It yeah. really is. Wears his heart on his sleeve, but just doesn't doesn't really get it too too wound up about it all. He's just a chill dude, isn't he? I'm sure there's lots of players we're going to forget about, and I apologise. Uh, very quick one. I think we've got to talk about Rory. Yeah, before we can that, talk about someone else. Someone else, yeah. Go on. Bryson. Okay. <laughs> where, where, let me check on the leaderboard. Where is it? Uh, he's not there. He, he, you know, since he's a 67 comment... I see this is a 67. He's mm. he's now, if, if the par was 67, I think he's 42 over par. Is that right? Yeah, oh. to the 67. What, like, where, really where, do you, where do you see him going in the future? I think I, I think he was probably a little bit too injured to play still. I think it was like, I don't want to miss out on the Masters. In a way, I could see him going one or two ways. Mm. Like, I, I don't see, I don't imagine this happening. But he Picture hinted, this. well, we didn't see Buddy Scott Scheffler being world number one and winning four times and this yeah. and another. Bryson has before hinted at quitting golf. Mm. Like, I'm not saying that this, something like this would no. happen, but imagine if he went on a run like this for six months. Yeah, I just thought, like, I he's got YouTube. plenty of money in the bank. <laughs> he's won a major. He's won multiple tournaments. He's got, like, say, he's got a lot. Like, does he want. Has he got the drive? All, yeah, he's got all he the He might pressure. do. Yeah. I'm not saying he, he hasn't, but it, it, if he's pushed it so far down this angle of distance, and it didn't seem like a big story this year at all. No. Did it? No. Like two years ago, it was a huge story. Yeah. Bryson's coming back after lockdown. It was the October Masters. Yeah. And, I, and he was my tiger that year. I, I, I had to, to watch, watch his first yeah. tee yeah, shot because yeah. he teed off on 10. Yeah. Yeah, he did. Yeah. And I was like, I have to watch this. And I think 10 he hit three would round the corner or whatever. And then 11 he hit drive. And I was like, here we go. Here we go. This is going to go 400 yards. This is like everything. And he didn't. He snap hooked it left. Yeah. Uh -huh. And I was like, ah. Oh. Now, he obviously shown signs since that of it working at some places like Bay Hill and obviously won the, won the, uh, the major, the US Open. Um, yeah, I don't know. I, I, there's a there's a few na big names that missed the cut. Oh yeah, big names. So I'll just kind of reel off a few. Don't we're going to go into this massively, but like um, Spieth, Kepka, uh, Xander Schauffele. Like he was he was the boy, wasn't he? Xander's gone weird at the moment. Like 
Gary Woodland, you know, he's been hitting some form. Justin yeah. Rose. Um, Molinari in the wild. Molinari, De- uh, obviously DeChambeau. Um, Paul Casey, obviously Paul Casey we drew actually. Sandy it? Lyle. I know. We had a little take on him last week, and it didn't, I don't know how, how it went down. Um, Louis we quest- we questioned, it be interesting your take. We questioned whether someone like Sandy Lyle should still be playing in no. the Masters. Oh, wow. <laughs> 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 You've been much more direct than me. <laughs> A lot of people. I, I, it's great what he did winning it, amazing. But there's like, the sh- I personally, I think now, he, he, did he miss the cut last year? He's missed the cut some like seven years in a row. Right. Okay. So, it's not, even, like, not even more, maybe. Yeah. So he's not competing, is he? And I know it's nice. And I like um, when I watch the podcast with with Faldo. He says, you know, he goes with his son Matt and makes a day of it. Saturday plays par three, goes and soaks up the atmosphere, and then. I'm not going to play because I know I'm not going to p- compete. You can. He's still got the golden ticket, Lyle. He can still go to the Masters. As long he as can he still play the par three. He goes to the Champions Dinner. He gets the f- like the full on buzz. Let someone else like there's there's a lad now out there who is trying to pave his career. Who might be, you know, whether it comes through qualification or something. However, it would work. But the the, the only one thing he's not taking anyone else's spot. Yeah, yeah, he isn't really. That yeah, he's not he's not made the cut now for eight years, right? Um, but then I also read, I'm sure this was his 100th major tournament that he's played in, right? And he's the first Scottish guy to do it. Or if it's not this year, it's next year, right? So we're going to see him next year, then, aren't we? I'd imagine so. It, it's something Should along we the lines have a bet of on him missing the cut. Let me see if I can find it. I'm not sure. He's pl- he's played in something along the lines of a hundred. Like that's impressive. Majors. Uh, well, I was up in Scotland on Thursday. In fact, yeah, I was in I was in the um, Dunvegan, and this was a funny this was a funny one. So there was a, a group of students in there, and Landis Landis Sile. Landis Sile. He's a new player. Yeah, is that Sandy who's L- taking Sandy Lyle's place in the Masters <laughs> yeah. next year? Yeah. Uh, Sandy Lyle t- came up on TV, and it was when he actually chipped in on the 18th, mm. and um, he had his like his braces on, and like all these students kind of like cheered, and they were kind of semi mocking him a little bit, yeah. like kind of a little bit taking the mick. They all had a few beers and whatever. I actually bought him around the Sambucas, which I don't think was the best idea uh, in the world. Sandy's coming on in a minute. Can you get really like, <laughs> get up for it? So, and, so anyway, this woman kind of, um, as she came back from the bar or the toilets or whatever, kind of come, come close to me and kind of said, like, she was Scottish. She went, I can't believe the disrespect by those young boys from Sandy Lyle. He'll, he's a hero here in Scotland. And I'm thinking... You obviously didn't listen to the podcast last week <laughs> yeah. where I said maybe you shouldn't play. Yeah. But again, just on this, it's nothing, absolutely nothing against actually Sandy Lyle himself. No, I'm no, sure great, amazing absolute, champion. Absolute legend. But, but when do you actually call it a day? Yeah, if you just Who knows? The cut. We'll yeah. ask him. Let's get him on the podcast and ask him. Yeah. Hi, um, Sandy. Uh, when are you stopping? <laughs> <laughs> and have you ever been to the Dunvegan? <laughs> yeah. If you go to Dunvegan, don't go when the sh- those students are in because they'll, yeah. they'll be getting and you on the Sambu. Yeah, Rick's and, leathered them up with Sambu. And all sorts. <laughs> um, yeah, some big names. Anyway, that's that's the Masters. That's pretty much wrapped up. R- what, Rory? Did you want to? Oh, yeah. That guy. That guy, Rory. Um, oh. It is strange. He's so bloody good. He's so, so, so bloody good. And when you watch him yesterday, he looked like it was easy. Yeah. Do you think? Yeah. There's one more person I want to speak about as well, actually. Um, but he, he look, he, I thought he made it look easy yesterday. He did, yeah. But that's is that not a trend with him? Get out of contention and then when it doesn't really matter and you're not going to win? It'd be like playing golf with your mates versus playing golf with True. like a, a, a championship on the line or a tournament on the line. Um, Just like playing golf with your mates at Augusta National and shooting it. Yeah, eight but under. Like, <laughs> he goes out there. He's not, think, he's not thinking, I'm going to win. There was probably what... A f- Five to ten percent chance yeah. that he, he could win. I was at a friend's house last night watching it, and they're, oh, he's going to win, he's going to win, he's going to come back if he gets to eight. I was like, no. I think not, if he'd have posted a world where he wins here, yeah. If he'd have posted eight or nine under in the clubhouse, he would have lost by one in the end. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. but <laughs> Scott Sheffler could have five put it instead yeah, of one. Would have just yeah. Um, it, uh, yeah, it's mad. Is it? Bet- it's got to be between the years because it's not technical, surely. I mean. You've watched him hit wedges, right? What do you mean? You're not... Yeah, but that's still got to be... You could have a good game against him. <laughs> Shut up, can I act? <laughs> yeah, but it's, it's not technical on the wedges. 
Mm. Is it? Oh, what do you see? Go on the, then, Matt. This, Matt this, give us your hot take. When you watch someone like Lowry with a wedge, yeah, there's lots of shots there, isn't it? If you said, right, um, win slightly into here, we're at 70 yards, I'm going to give you your 50, you just go, right, I'll just hit like a little low running draw in there. With Rory, it's like, right, pass me the 60, how high does it need to go and yeah, how much spin is it going to have? He does hit it high Every, and like, hard. There's, there's never like a, a finesse shot for me. There's... There's, there's every shot I watched when he was hitting wedges on, like, Friday. He's like, oh, he's got 100 yards in. Oh, he's got a 70-foot putt. <laughs> and he's like, full swing finish. And you're like, what is that? Yeah, no, like, fair there's, is, there's, fair there's, Like, you look at, like, when DJ turned it around. Because yeah. Rory is by far the best driver of the golf ball in our generation yeah. we will ever see. No yeah. one's going to do it better. He just absolutely munches it. But then what's the point? He may as well just hit a seven iron off the tee and another <laughs> one in. <laughs> True. But then DJ goes and works on his wedges. He did. And he, and he was brilliant. I, I don't know why someone's not there going like, he, he went to Cowan to try and change his goal swing to try and hit a bit more fadey. Sod that. Keep drawing it off the tee. Keep doing what you're doing. Get someone hitting, right, let's hit a little chippy wedge. Can you cut one in? Can you do this? Can you do that? And go and work on those bits. But if it's not a strength, do you work on your weaknesses as much as your strengths sometimes. I think players do work on the strengths a lot. Yeah, like when like the whole Bryson thing happened a few years ago and then Rory's there like, I'm trying to up my speed. It's like, why? why? Yeah, are you, are you actually mad? Yeah. You are the best driver of the golf ball. You're trying to get another five yards. What, so you can duff it a five <laughs> yards closer to the green? What, what are you doing? Fair dues. Yeah. There you it, go. Because right, I absolutely love him. He's like the best thing for golf, like after Tiger now. Such a role model, you know, looks after himself, very articulate, great for the game. But just go and work on your wedges. There you go, Rory. Listen to Matt. Love you if you're listening, Rory. The other player and we need to talk about, and I don't I don't think you've met him yet, but he's been he's a friend of the podcast, Minwoo Lee. Uh did I have you met him? him in St Andrews with you? No, he, he was just leaving and just, I turned yeah, up. Yeah, just the day after. Um, um, amazing, wow. wasn't he? Oh, my God. Like it's He just, like, burst in last round. Ever Masters. Like, for him, you can almost forgive his first three rounds. Yeah. Un- unlike Rory, because he's yeah. been there, done that. Exactly, yeah. Where, like, um, Min Woo Lee shot 73 first round, respectable. Bad, yeah. 75, again, made the cut, did yeah. what he needed to do. Yeah. Uh, 72, again, respectable. Yeah. And then yesterday, he goes on the most incredible front nine run. What was he, like five under? Six it? under. It, it equals the lowest front nine ever. So he goes, par eagle, par, 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 birdie, 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 birdie. <laughs> <laughs> but then, unfortunately, went bogey, 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 bogey. Uh, um, we don't want to talk Yeah, about his back that. nine, unfortunately, let him down. But it, I, I'm, I'm hoping... He's I'm a hoping already. I can line up something to chat to him this week hopefully hopefully yeah. i don't want to guarantee anything but it would be so fascinating to hear about his first ever masters yeah like tell me everything yeah like, literally tell me every everything. shot you, like <laughs> when, when you get that guy who tells you like about his round so uh down 13 uh, out of bounds and then uh, to, I, don't, I don't care mate be like li- right, so what was the grass like which way was it growing into you tell me everything Mimu. i would literally just set him up on a zoom for an hour and go speak <laughs> in Lee, tell me masters and then just Put, put me on mute. Yeah. <laughs> and then um, what? I just think, awesome. So oh, I think that's going to give him, obviously he would, he'd be disappointed with his back nine, but I think that front nine will give him ridiculous confidence. Because I think before playing Augusta, you must really question your ability and think, Am I, can I actually post a number around there? Like regardless of how good you are at these top players, their first time at the Masters must think, can I Can I actually can do, I do this? It? Yeah. The one that really surprises me, and I know we keep saying about, we're not going to talk, probably the yippiest golfer on the planet, Zalatoris. Yeah. Well, he's great. Just don't hit it to six foot. <laughs> Will Zalatoris has played eight rounds now at Augusta, last year and this year. That is about 13, 14 under par. He's level. only not broke par. He's had, he's had one par round and one over par round. That's it. So he's had six under par rounds. One level par and one over par round. He like. <laughs> did, did you see him up at the Open when we were at St George's? No. He is just God. a striper. Well, they all are, like they just must. like like next level though. He absolutely crushes it. <laughs> if he could get sorted from like six feet, he'd be the next one. 
He, he, he can still somehow. Some of, it, uh, some of the putts he held, like I downhill, know. left to right, is, like, and you're like, oh, well, here we go. We're going to see like a Shuffler four putt. He's got and he like, was just like nah, he's got bro. like this this arm lock putter. He claws it. He kind of he kind of does like this figure of eight. Hits it massively out the toe, and somehow it goes in. <laughs> The reverse triple claw figure of eight Sultan Pike. <laughs> stroke. Like, and then, like, the ball just drops in. Yeah. And you're like, what? Oh, oh, right. Um, okay. <laughs> that um, worked. Anyway, excited. Masters was awesome. Um, I thought the Masters coverage was brilliant. Things like Dude Perfect beforehand. I, gonna, I wrote that down. What like, what do you think? I just are, it was like, brilliant. The, the, and the chairman the th- came out. Yeah, the did Frank, you, like, did you watch the Frank Ridley um, press conference? Yeah. He was like, oh, yeah, I heard these guys had, like, Millions of viewers. Well, they said he'd got like, and they were, he was accurate, like got 57 million subscribers. Yeah. And you're he like, knew the game, didn't he? I'm thinking, hi. Uh, <laughs> well, do you know what? When I watched I've got that, two yeah, <laughs> when I saw that, I thought, like, what what does that lead to in the future now? I think loads. I think loads. The, the way, like, the way the, I've already sent my email. Yeah. <laughs> hi, Rick. Um, can we do a battle golf? <laughs> so I know, I know, um, <laughs> I, I know Do Perfect wanted to play battle golf on Amen Corner uh, with Bryce Nishambo, but could I possibly, <laughs> possibly just come to the front gate and take a picture? Yeah. <laughs> I've got two million subscribers. <laughs> can I could, smell it? Could I possibly, like, take one step in and get kicked out by security. <laughs> yeah. I'll happily do that. Yeah, I'll post about it. <laughs> they were really nice, the security guards. Did you see that really cool uh, FPV drone footage as well? Yeah. Through the clubhouse oh. and stuff. Because you never see that. No. You, I've never seen no. inside the clubhouse. It's like Poulter in a McDowell a few years ago got like a, a telling off for sharing photos in really? there, didn't he? Yeah, oh, he was like, oh, if you've me. not If you've not seen it, I shared it on my Twitter. And basically this uh, this FP, the little tiny, tiny drone, those pilots are ridiculous. Ridiculous, by the way, and it flew down Imagine Magnolia Lane. Amazing, flew down Magnolia Lane, took a three sixty lap around the kind of um, roundabout where the um, the, the Masters symbol is, flag is yeah. and stuff. Because not many roundabouts in America, just at golf clubs where you drop your bags off. Yeah, it went and through the front door. The kind of the the person opened the door. The door opener <laughs> went in, gave you a full tour of literally every room, in fr- including the crow's nest, which I is know. cool, by the yeah. way. And then you come back, that it was just magical. So if you're not checked out, definitely do. But well their, done, Masters. Um, and the app, their the app's, app, the it's, app's it's, bloody amazing. If you've not got Sky, you could literally just sit on the app all day. Well, my mum's not got Sky, and she texted me last night saying, "Oh, I, I can't watch the can't watch the golf tonight, Rick." I said, "So two things on YouTube, they were live streaming Amen Corner, yeah. So she loved that, yeah." Um, um, and I said, download the app, but she didn't. I don't think she did. But either, in fact, did I tell her to download the app? You didn't even share your Sky login with her. No, <laughs> don't tell my mum. <laughs> don't, my mum listens and watch. Don't, yeah. don't tell her. That I've I can not got do Sky that. either. <laughs> don't tell her I can do that. <laughs> no, I didn't watch it either, mum. Um, but anyway, yeah, awesome, awesome, awesome. Um, well done. Can't wait for next year. Yeah. Um, I'll tell you what. Very quickly. Yes. I asked just in case some masters themed questions. Um, in fact, I'll take any more screenshots just very quickly. Oh, this was uh, last, last, last thing. This was a mad take on Scott Scheffler in his p- press post round interview. Mm. By the way, I cried yesterday. At the Masters or just in general? I cried after 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 he won. How many drinks had you had? Zero. Oh wow! I know. I don't, I don't quite know why. Like <laughs> when Tiger won in two thousand nineteen, I cried like a like a little baby. Yeah. Um, I've not not many times I've had. Yesterday it hit me somehow. I don't know what it was. Whether him and his wife, in, his wife looks lovely. She looks so mm. bloody pleased for him. They, they are very wholesome, aren't they? I just, I just don't know. I, for me, he almost just strikes me as a bit of like a an, a normal person. Mm. I'm going to message him, get him on the podcast. Um, yeah. This is what he said before he played. He cried like a baby this morning. Yeah, I was so stressed out. I didn't know what to do. I was sitting there telling Meredith, his wife, I don't think I'm ready for this. Yeah. I just felt overwhelmed. And then goes, and then out, goes and shoots out and looks like that. a nice man. Unbelievable. It just goes to show, doesn't it? Because I think a lot of people when they watch these tour players, and I'm the same, think they don't get nervous, think they don't feel pressure. Can they you ima- absolutely like, can you do. They just deal with it really well. Yeah. So anybody listening and watching, if you've got your local tournament coming up this weekend or you're away with the lads at the weekend or you're going to Portugal, whatever, everyone's nervous. They really are. Yeah. It's just how you deal with it. Yeah. But that, I thought I found that amazing. Uh, right, question. Any any other things, Matt? Are you all right with that? No, I, I, the Masters is just brilliant. <laughs> Can we do it again tomorrow? Um, da, 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 da. If Macro had done what he did, which was phenomenal, by the way, would the final round of the Masters have been as anticlimactic? 
if McElroy hadn't done... All oh, right, okay. So, yeah, so if he just went to <clears> shot level, um, the No, I, I, I definitely think the McElroy storyline was was quite exciting. Up, yeah. yeah, really quite exciting. Um, there's a lot of Rory questions. When is Rory going to stop playing average to awful for the first 54 holes and light it up on Sunday? When he can hit a wedge. <laughs> there you go. Uh, what are your thoughts on McElroy? Wow, every, literally everything's about McElroy. How do you think? He is, like I say, he's just, he is amazing. Just please, Rory. How do you think Cameron Smith will bounce back following yesterday? Win. I think he will. I think, yeah. I think he'll check his bank balance, go fishing. Yeah. Have you seen, have you seen that uh, PGA meme? It's good, isn't it? Yeah. It's really good. Just going to go out on the boat. I think he, I think he's so chill. Yeah. Um, What did you think about Hatton's comments? I've not actually known um, that the course isn't fair. Yeah. He said, you hit some shot, you hit a good shot and sometimes don't get rewarded for it. I don't think that's fair. You should. You should hit a good shot and get rewarded for it. But you can say that about not... links. You can say that about links golf. It's golf in general, of course isn't it? it is. Yeah, you I... can't control the wind. You can't control, you know, the bounce. It's it just is what it is. Yeah, I I hundred percent think a lot of that is golf because mm. there's so many times where, um, I, like, I remember the first time I ever played links golf and I, I walked off going. I don't like it. What is that? It's not yeah. f- like that's not fair. Mm. This amount of times I've hit a good shot and it's bounced off the green, or it's done this, or it's mm. done that, or it's not fair that the wind's off the right. It's not fair. It's like tough. That's yeah. golf. Do Deal you know what I mean? It. Yeah. The only difference with golf is it's natural, where Augusta it's been manufactured like that. Yeah. But it's still golf. Yeah. But there's, you know, he's he's got a caddy there. He's been there a few times, and there's places that you can't hit it. Yeah. And yeah, sometimes yeah, it is a. Um, you know, one of those things. But there's probably, during that round, it's gone the other way where you think, oh, gosh, I didn't hear that. Oh, oh it's coming back. That. That's, that's worked all right in my favour. There's a or lot of times. hit the tree Correct. and it's come back out. Or, oh, that's just made it through a bush. It's easy to stand there and go, God, that one nasty slope, it came and it got me. Yeah. How many times? I was like that, as a, you know, as a kid growing up. And then you think, well, you know, it's, it is what it is. Just deal with it. Yeah. How many times have you hit it in the trees and it, go in the trees and go worse and yeah. kick out of bounds. Yeah. And how many times did it hit the tree and bounce back out into play? Yeah. Like That's just how it it's is. It's like life, isn't it? Of course it's it is. Perfect. It's perfect. It's very easy to remember the bad luck. Yeah. It's very easy to remember those bad bounces. Yeah. The good think, bounces, you know the what, good like, luck is really that, hard to remember. I think that's where shit like Scheffler as well, there was some some things like, say like 18 yeah. on the Saturday, hit it in those bushes, you think, oh God, oh. he's dead. And it was just like, all oh, right, it's there. Okay, drop, whack it on the green or just like, just over, just over pitches like a couple of feet away. And you're like, all right. And you like, imagine if that was Hatton, it would have yeah. been like, well, the tree's been uprooted. Yeah. He's uh, gone full <laughs> Tasmanian devil on it. Are you related? No. <laughs> I'm a lot taller and bolder. Ah, oh, okay. That's the difference, <laughs> right? Um, Good golfer though, Hatton. My God. I, uh, I went somewhere yesterday. Well done. That was very, very heartwarming. Okay. So, I'll tell you the story. So, um, I got a message a few weeks ago. In fact, you probably know him actually. Do you remember Tom from Northern Golf? Tommy Trinders? Yeah. Yeah. He messaged me a few weeks ago saying that um, would, I, would I possibly, <laughs> he doesn't work there anymore, oh, would, would I possibly come down to his golf club, which I thought was a different golf club, but it's Berry Golf Club. Okay. Right. Could I come down on a Sunday afternoon of the master uh, Sunday afternoon of the Masters? Um, we've got a lot of junior golfers down there who love watching your videos and they'd love to meet you. So love I thought, that. okay, yeah, why not? Sunday afternoon, I'll, I'll happily do that. So um, after about several reminders off him, uh, yesterday, are you here yet? <laughs> yesterday, I thought, well, I'll take my daughter. I'll take, I took Ivy with me because mm-hmm. um, she's kind of showing glimpses of golf. I want to I saw you posting some pictures of you and yeah. your daughter having some golf lessons this weekend as well. So uh, I want to come on to that. Um, so I took her down. She's seven, um, and I didn't know what to expect. I, I kind of thought it would be like a bit of a presentation. I kind of thought it was like a junior. Organ like a junior section yeah. having a competition, and that's what I thought it was. Yeah. Anyway, I turned up, and to my disbelief, there was no juniors. <laughs> there was one of the the most lovely, heartwarming things I've ever seen. So, let's tell the story. Chris Bibby, who's the pro there now, he's moved recently there. Mm-hmm. Him and a couple of other volunteers every Sunday yeah. at four p.m. have been running this free golf camp for the yeah. kids, all ages. Yep. All abilities, free, okay? Amazing. Afterwards, you get pizza, you get chips, again, all free, yep. okay? 
and it's it's been starting for about six months. It's run all the way through the winter. Even when it was snowing, the kids turned up, and even if they didn't play golf, they had a snowball fight or something. Brilliant. When it's been terrible weather, they've gone up in the pro, in the clubhouse upstairs and they've done putting challenges in one of the conference rooms. Absolutely brilliant. So for six months, it's been building and building and building, and every week it's got a little bit bigger. Friends have brought other friends and and blah blah, blah and it's free. It's free. No put no payment, right? Yeah. So I turned up yesterday, and there's about 25 kids there, all different ages, all different abilities, and probably about the same amount of parents, about 25 parents, all kind of having a little natter and this, that, and the other. And Ivy was there as well, and she wanted to join in, and I, I was basically there for the whole hour, and pizza and chips after, even though I, I didn't have that, kids had that. Yeah. Um, and a pint of Guinness. And then um, it, it was... It was brilliant. So loads of them watched the videos, which I really appreciate. All, all lad, boys and girls from like four year old up to maybe like twelve. Um, some were good golfers. Some yeah. could play. Some like the one little lad, um, Ollie, was like the junior captain at the golf club. Um, and like you had a little another little boy called Jude and Spencer, who were, like the three good decent players there. Um, and a lot of the other kids were kind of just trying it out. They had clubs there, so you didn't have to buy clubs. I'm you could wear this. what you want. You could wear hoodies, some get like Jude had a little United top on. Like it was dead super relaxed. And because it was at 4 p.m. on a Sunday, there was no like members around, there's no competition. They could be loud, they could have fun. Yeah. Um, Ivy joined in, she made a little friend, which was lovely. Absolutely brilliant. And this for free. Yeah. Like, how good is that? And the, the idea is obviously they want to try and get more juniors down there. They want to be able to get these juniors potentially becoming members of the golf club because they are the future of the golf club. I 100%. think this is what golf clubs are sometimes forgetting. Yeah. Junior sections at golf clubs are really dying. I, I've got, just off camera here, we've got um, Steve who works for me. Who We grew up together in the junior section. Yeah, yeah. Everything you've said there reminds me of my junior organiser, a lady called Jean Cordwell. And at the time I was, I started when I was 16. So um had two years of juniors really. And she did, we had Friday night roll-ups and it was very much the same. Like she, she would, uh, at the time, I think Jean would have been late 60s, maybe early 70s. Yeah. Um, she'd been doing it for two or three years already. Took us to every junior match in this like clapped out Volvo that she wow. had. Um, but we had probably 30, 40 juniors every Friday night would turn up. We would play, we'd have a little bit of food afterwards. Our junior section at Warrington at the time, I think we had 125. That's I, I don't amounts. know the exact number now. Can't be that many now, can it? I want to say 50. <sighs> Which is still good. It's still good, but it's nowhere near where it no. was. But we had this like um, community and like all my friends now are from, from then. Yeah. I either play golf with them, they yeah. were a little bit older, like the lads who were older than me were in the sort of mid to late 40s and 50s. They would we had like a junior rider cup where we would play the seniors team. Brilliant. We would have junior seniors. We would have this green some things, but um, and then uh, Graham Cox, who was the professional, and Ray Mackay, uh, who was the head pro. They would do quite a lot as well. They were coaching and stuff like that, and it was a lot of it was Amazing. free. It was funded by the club and stuff, Amazing. and it was you know Vol- volunteers and stuff. Yeah, we're, we're members of the club still now. I think right now. I've mentioned it for you. I think golf is in an incredibly strong position. I think there's a lot of golfers, a lot of new people trying golf. Like every time I've been to Trafford, and obviously you worked to Trafford yeah, yeah. for a few years after me, it's a busy, bloody Ugh. place. Like it's You're to go in every time. busy. And it's not just golfers. You get no, golfers there. I would probably say 70 30 in the favour of golfer v non golf, uh, non golfer v golfer. But that, and that, and that, it, it's a portal to get kids. 100%. New people, young boys and girls, like people go there for couples and have dates. People, you know, go with groups of friends and just try it out for the first time. It's almost like a bit like bowling. Like mm. it's almost like, well, let's just give it a go. Why not? It's yeah. a bit of fun. They've got the dinosaur golf or whatever it may be. And I'll go there now. And every time I go, certainly on the weekend, there's loads of kids trying it. Loads. Yeah. Kids clubs have got ridiculously better yeah. than than what we when we grew up. They were cut down it wasn't, seven nine from your dad. It wasn't kids yeah. clubs were there. <laughs> Now you've got like companies like Ping Golfing, Make, Golfing yeah. the, the Scottish company. The big heads on them, so it's easy to hit. Amazing. It's spelled, it's Dolphin spelt with a G. Yeah. Um, and the guys up there make some great little clubs. And like Ping have like the Moxie set. Yeah. Taylor made did that Rory set. Yeah. Um, I'm sure Cobra probably got a little junior yeah. set. I'm sure they have. Um, I don't remember Nike back in the day having some. Yeah. But like, Tiger set. I remember but that. But like, 
that is now so much more readily available. You oh, can yeah. you can kind of make a bit of a half set. Like I bought all my kids like little half sets. It didn't yeah. cost ridiculous amounts. No. Um, and they just love it. A little putter, a little wedge, a little award. Even and if it's one club. And you kind of off really. Yeah. Um, but I feel like you've got that so wrapped up in the fact that again, growing up, can you remember how challenging it was for clothing growing up? I'd have to wear your school pants, wouldn't you, really? I've got that that school wearing school pants and this one pair of pants that my mum got me from Marks and Spencer's. And do you remember when like pants had the turn up on yeah, them and they were like the stitched in yeah. the front <laughs> and in like this beige, horrible colour. Oh. Where now like these kids at the at Berry look cool. Yeah. Like they had little hoodies on. Pants on. They had or... little like you know, they had trainers on because yeah. golf shoes have become trainers now. Yeah. Like I remember the very first time that I got bought golf shoes when I was about 11. They were the most uncomfortable, horrible things I've ever <laughs> worn Plast- in my life. Plasticky leather and you're like big cleats. Remember them tongs on the front? As horrible, well? <laughs> horrible. So uncomfortable. You definitely get blisters, all sorts. Oh, yeah. Where now, like these kids, like, just wear the trainers. Yeah. Like, doesn't, because golf shoes have become more trainer like, yeah. which is great. You can't really tell the difference these days. No. Um, it was just, it was so, and we went in the clubhouse after, and I was chatting to this group of, of uh, boys and girls and showing them some pre release videos. And um, they, they were just great. The uh, massive shout out to Chris, uh, the whole team at, at Berry Golf Club. Thanks for Tom for inviting me down. Thanks for all the parents, because it, it is the parents that are going to take the kids oh, down. Oh, yeah, 100%. I think, obviously, now we're parents. You yeah. just had a, another little one recently, yeah. and a little boy. How old? Uh, he's four four weeks old today. I thought you looked a bit tired. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, you don't actually. You look pretty good. Well, Congratulations, you know, by the way. skin routine. <laughs> Congratulations. <laughs> you just always look this old. <laughs> yeah. Um, but, like... Massive shout out, everything they're doing there. And I, and, I, and I want and I hope and I pray that more golf clubs do it because I, I really think it's very, very important. And yeah, I'll the, definitely the take my kids and, down to somewhere like that because yeah. they absolutely loved it. Uh, for me, like the membership and things like that, when you look at like um, community outreach programs and things like that, say down in London where it's a lot of like um, – centres have been shut down and things like that imagine like a golf club went well if you're under 12 13 whatever it is free membership you can come on x y and z days uh we'll have uh, if they had either the parents with them or you know there were some members that then joined them be amazing it's like you say you know in 10 years time junior a who joined on the free membership is probably now a member paying his grand membership and it's 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 like such a good game for for life as well teaches you so many skills well when i went yesterday again you you spot on with that i got there yesterday and they kind of they had all the kids up on the like the chipping green and they kind of hid me in the pro shop at first and kind of give this reveal i was a bit worried i was like what about if none of them know (laughs) no they're like that's well, Pete Finch. Yeah, that's not Pete. <laughs> <laughs> I thought we asked for the other guy. That's not Mr. Beast. <laughs> he said we had a YouTuber coming. Yeah. Who's this joker? <laughs> where's, where's Dude Perfect? Uh, I kind of rocked up then. I was, I was a bit kind of semi-nervous thinking these guys aren't going to know who the hell I am. So I kind of went up and luckily they did. You said and, um, out early. Yeah, I said, Rick I've gone go tell him. <laughs> have you heard of Rick Shields? <gasps> oh, no, it's that guy with the beard. Yeah, yeah. He's got one of those gold plaques. <laughs> yeah. but, and I went over there and I... And, I kind of went to like high five them all, a fist pump them. Every one of them shut my hand. Class. Every one of the twenty odd kids shut my hand. I was yeah. like, and I know that sounds like Mr. insignificant, Shields. yeah, but it's it's a really key oh, life. Amazing, lesson. yeah. They all looked at me in the eye, yeah. shook my hand, and and that's not that's free. Yeah, you have to pay to do that. Le- learning to actually speak to elder elder people, 100%. older conversation, like all oh, my mates now are like forty five and fifty. Go play golf with, yeah. and you, you feel comfortable about your there. age. Yeah, yeah. Generally, have a look at the moment. <laughs> yeah, um, but you go and hold a conversation with them. You're fine with it, as where yeah. you know if you didn't have that. Some of my friends from school, like you talk to them, like, oh, have you, have you played on COD recently? Yeah, exactly. Sorry, what? Yeah, I think I do, I do think golf gives you so many different lessons. Mm. You took your daughter to go to a golf lesson, didn't you, this weekend? Yeah. Yeah, she tells um, about that. Is it first one or multiple? No, it was the second one. She well, I got a clubs. Uh, She's eight now, so I got her a set when she was about five or six, maybe. Yeah. Uh, played a little bit. Never like one thing that like I'd always praise my dad for. He never pushed me towards golf being a PGA pro. He was like, well, if you play, you play. If you don't, I don't care. I'm a bit like my kids. Yeah. Are you the same? Yeah. Just if you want to go and do it, do given it. the given the opportunity. Yeah. yeah if you if take you, if you it, like it, great. Great. Yeah. So um, last last weekend it was like I want to because just on that because of that 
you actually picked up golf really late, didn't yeah, you? Yeah, 16. That's yeah. mad, considering you, your dad's a PGA pro. Yeah, jo- he joined me at the club. We lived, you know, 1,000 yards from the golf club when I was 10 years old, and I went. Um, didn't know anyone there. Had, like, my school uniform to play. I was like, what is all this about? Like, yeah. my mates are all playing football. I'm here with this old age man who like I'd had to go out with your dad yeah um, <laughs> yeah like, who's this bloke <laughs> <laughs> um, could could hardly hit it and I was like I, I don't like this dad I don't like golf and he was like right okay no worries and that was that sort of left it and then went to a, a driving range where he was running and teaching at six years later with some friends during school time it's like ping 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 got into it yeah. hitting a few balls and was like I want to go and play again right okay go and that was it then so I've sort of taken the same approach with with my daughter. Like, if you if you want to go and play, it's there. It's on the doorstep. If yeah. not, I'm not going to say, right, we are going to the driving range <laughs> right now. And if you don't show me the perfect Varden grip, God help you. Um, <laughs> so yeah, she, she went and she she asked me last that, week. Oh, that wrist! Yeah, what is that take? Come oh, on, my. get into external rotation. <laughs> um, showing him showing him swings of, yeah. of Sheffler and going. Oh, actually, no, let's not do that one. Yeah, let's not do that one. Um, can you show me P seven, please? <laughs> Wrong, <laughs> grounded. Um, yeah, she 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 just asked me last week, um, can we go and play golf this weekend? And I knew Sam at Warrington, he does all the junior classes. Um, I just texted him saying, have you got any spots? Brilliant. Um, and it's she nice went, that she asked you, wasn't it? Yeah, and she went last week on like the, the lads class, as it were, um, because he was going away somewhere, so he was only running the one class at 9am. And he said, yeah, just bring her along. And then it was meant to be uh, the girls class this weekend. Um, but they were all the way on Easter holidays. But she was like, no, I'm still going. I'm still going. Brilliant. Um, so I just sort of went up there, sat back on the buggy and let Sam do what he did, yeah. didn't interfere. And they were just like lacing drivers and she got in the car afterwards and it was, did you enjoy that? Oh, I love whacking the driver. It was Brilliant. so much fun. Brilliant. And you're like, great, carry Brilliant. on. If you you know, if you know, don't do it next week, case hurrah. I think that's very important, again, for parents. I, I get quite a lot of questions from parents about how they can get the kids into it and this that, mm. other. I think give them the opportunities. Yeah. I think they'll if they like it, they'll like it. And then really like, I've hardly at all taught my daughter anything. No. I've honestly you hardly just made her sit in front of the TV and watch every, watch every, every YouTube video. video. <laughs> like I I have just kind of let her copy me. And it's amazing how I'm not saying she swings it brilliant just yet, but how well she's adapting to that. Yeah, they just like, figure, watch and figure it out, yeah. don't they? Like, there you I, go. I'll kind of do a follow-through, and I'll, and I'll, I'll kind of say to her, so on this one, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try and hold my follow-through for three seconds or something. Mm. And then suddenly, she's just got, she's just, that's all she's trying to do. Yeah, call it the cameraman with uh, Darcy. Yeah, or you, I used to call it yeah. like the, stat, the the man on the top of a trophy. Yeah. You know, like these guys yeah. who always yeah. hold the finish. Yeah. Um, and suddenly, like five minutes late, she's like, like this, Daddy, like this. And I'm like, just like that. Yeah. Wiping, away, <laughs> wiping away my tear. That's my girl. Yeah. That's my girl. Um, but yeah, I, I think top tips for parents, give them the opportunity. And, and ha- or 100% this has to be the most important rule of any parent coaching the kid. Don't fan the club on the takeaway. <laughs> <laughs> Keep, Keep it fun. It fun. Yeah, and honestly, I still think this is my best tip. When they're having almost the most amount of pu- fun, start to wrap the session up. Yeah, yeah. Like, don't let it overrun. Yeah, let them um, be wanting more, coming back for more. Hundred yeah. percent. So I think as soon as you know, if, if let's say your ball, your daughter it? yesterday was a loving hitting driver, and suddenly you go, "Oh, go and get another fifty balls." Yeah, it's the worst thing because yeah. like after ten, she's like, I, "I kind of, I was enjoying it then. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not kind of yeah. enjoying it now." Can we but, go now? I'm hungry. No. <laughs> you will carry on. Yeah. Um, but yeah, mega, it, mega, mega. It. Fun, fun, fun for them. It, Don't push them. It might be the uh, the future stars of our channels. Could be, yeah. Could take over. The, Ch- change the names yeah. of the channels. Yeah. That's it. Good, good way out. Ivy Shields Golf. Yeah. This will all be pink. <laughs> yeah. And in, like, in the background, they'll have like, unicorns and all <laughs> yeah. sorts. And, and like you see that Some little slime. statue of Tiger? <laughs> yeah. That'll actually be Scottish Scheffler. Yeah. <laughs> with his, his legs going everywhere and just <laughs> ripping it round. It could be it could be Scotty Scheffler is is the man. Well, anyway, I thought it was a fantastic podcast. Thank you so much, Matt, for for joining me today as special Pleasure. co-host. Anything else you want to cover? Anything no. else you want to talk about? No, all good. good there. I think we've we've hit the nail on the head. I'm sure. Um, I'm sure. Guy is listening over 
on a beach or on a sun lounge or somewhere. So hopefully that was all right, guy. Guy would like delete the the, the, yeah. the episode. <laughs> How dare he come and sit in my seat? He'll be like, that episode's not good enough. Delete. Yeah. yeah. Um. But yeah, hopefully. It'll, everyone enjoyed that make sure you like and subscribe check out matt by the way matt has a fantastic youtube channel he's killing it at the moment making some awesome content um oh, not, not okay content let's not pick it up too much wow uh, <laughs> so make sure you jump over there and subscribe to matt um well, how many subscribers are you on now uh 173 173 yeah brilliant <laughs> so thousand. if we can get matt to 200 <laughs> subscribers by the end of the week that'd be fantastic yeah that'd be lovely no, yeah. he's, on, he's on 173 thousand subscribers that's that's more of a shock than scotty chef scotty chef yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. i'm joking i'm joking guys hopefully you enjoyed we'll see you next week if i can chat to me really before the end of the week, you might get one more episode. You might, but I'm trying. I'll have my people speak to his people. Right, guys, that was episode 126. See you next week. Thanks, Matt. Pleasure. Catch you soon.